These do's and don'ts there for men, not boys. Chapter 1. Be adaptable. Alright, this is key. No two women are alike. You can't use the same playbook for every woman you meet. That is not how it works. Be adaptable. Stay on your toes. Learn to read her signals, her body language, her vibe. She works, well, what works with one woman might be an entire disaster with another. Don't just try a move and expect it to work every time. Pay attention to how she's responding. If she's pulling back, maybe you're coming on too strong. If she looks bored, then maybe you need to step up your game. It's all about staying flexible and receptive. Being adaptable shows that you're not just some robotic pickup artist. It shows her that you're a human being who can actually connect to her on somewhat of a real level. Chapter 2. Don't compare her to other women. Now, for the love of all things holy, do not compare her to other women. Just don't. It's just a turnoff. It's a relationship killer. You want to make her feel unique, special, appreciated for who she is. Not like she's just another notch on your bedpost. Comparison suggests that you're still hung up on your past, or worse, that you view women as interchangeable. Show her some respect. If you can't do that, then you've got bigger problems than just trying to turn a woman on. Chapter 3. Don't. Be desperate or needy. If you're carrying around that stink of desperation, I got news for you. You ain't fooling anybody. The ladies can smell that from a mile away. We all have needs. We all want connection, affection, and yes, of course, sex. That is being human. But there is a world of difference between wanting these things and needing them to feel okay about yourself. Clinginess, needy behavior, that is not attractive. It's pathetic. It is a clear signal that you are not comfortable in your own skin. You don't feel complete by yourself. You're seeking validation from somebody else. And guess what? That's not her job. She wants a partner. An equal. Not some project she needs to fix. Desperation manifests itself in many ways. Perhaps you're too quick to respond to her text. You're always available. You shower her with excessive compliments. You're willing to change your plans at the drop of a hat for her. You might think you're being attentive, but you're not. You're telegraphing a lack of self-worth, and that's bad. So here's the deal. You want to be attractive to women? Well, start by being okay with yourself, by yourself. Know your worth. Have a life that you enjoy, independent of any woman. Pursue your interests, have friends, have passions, let life be full and interesting. That makes you interesting. And don't try and hide your desperation behind any kind of indifference. That is just another form of neediness, and it is just as transparent. You want to know the real secret to attracting women? Be somebody who has something to offer. And I'm not talking about offering your desperation. Offer your presence, your passion, your ambition, your authentic self. Chapter 4. Do. Maintain strong eye contact. Now pay some close attention here because this ain't a game. Eye contact is not some trick that you pull out of your pocket when you want to look interesting. It is a sign of respect, dominance, and interest. It's a silent communicator, and it's, it's, it's not just about holding a gaze. It is about how you do it. Staring blankly like a deranged psychopath will get you nowhere, dude. Not at all. You need to master the art of confident, engaging eye contact. You ever heard of smiling with your eyes? That's what I'm talking about. It's a non-verbal cue that you're present, that you are genuinely interested in the person that you're talking to. And let me be clear, do not flutter your eyelashes or go all soft and puppy-eyed. No, keep it strong, maintain that intensity, but keep it relaxed. There is a difference between an intense gaze and a death stare. When she talks, your eyes should be locked onto hers. Not in an obsessive way, but just to show her that you care, you are giving full attention that you find what she's saying important. And when you talk, your eyes should tell the same story your words do. And here is a pro tip, learn a triangle technique. You shift your gaze from one eye to another, and then to her mouth and back to her eyes again. This creates a sense of intimacy and sexual tension, my friend. But use it sparingly and wisely. But uh, here's a word of caution, don't make it a staring contest, that is creepy. Break eye contact every now and then, but make sure it's always you who breaks it first. And when you do, do it slowly, intentionally, not like you're trying to dodge a bullet. Strong eye contact is a sign of a man who knows his worth, who's confident, assertive, and comfortable. So, 
next time you catch yourself looking at your shoes or scanning the room while talking to a woman, remember this. You are a man, and men don't shy away from holding a gaze. They own it. Chapter 5. Don't ignore her boundaries. Don't you dare trample over a woman's boundaries. It's not just disrespectful, it's pathetic. A real man knows when to take charge and when to step back. And you gotta believe me, ignoring a woman's boundaries is not a show of strength or dominance. It is a flashing neon sign that screams insecurity and desperation. If she says no or stop, you stop. That's it. Full stop. No arguments, no buts. Don't say anything, just say, huh, okay. It doesn't matter if it's the middle of a conversation, a date, or even an intimate moment. When she sets a boundary, you respect it. Period. No woman is attracted to a man who can't respect her autonomy. But uh, here's the catch. Respecting boundaries doesn't mean you become a doormat. You need to respect and understand her personal space without feeling like it's all about you. It's not. This isn't a gray area, my guy. It's black and white. And trust me, if you can't understand this, you're no man. Chapter 6. Do. Demonstrate dominance in a respectful way. Now let's talk about dominance. Not the Fifty Shades of Grey kind. The manly kind. And no, they're absolutely not the same thing. Being dominant is not about bossing people around or showing how macho you are. It is about holding your own, asserting your opinions, taking the lead, all while respecting others. When it comes to turning a woman on, this is crucial. Let's put this into context. You're on a date. Take charge, make decisions, but ensure that she is comfortable with them. Don't just be a jerk who decides everything without even considering her. Suggest, do not dictate. Lead, do not bulldoze. When you're interacting with her, show confidence. Be assertive, but always respect her space. Don't invade that personal bubble. Don't touch her without clear, unambiguous consent. Not necessarily verbal, but, you know, if she's actually feeling it. Be a good judge of character, a good, uh, a good vibe judger, if you will. It's not that hard to understand. You can show dominance by the way that you handle yourself in a group, how you lead a conversation, how you respond to challenges, even by how you walk into a room. Show that you are in control, but you're not controlling. And trust me, when you strike that balance, the results are powerful. A man who's dominant, you're respectful, is like a magnet to women. Chapter 7. Don't brag or show off. This is so important. If you think bragging about your car, your job, or gym routine is going to turn a woman on, you're wrong. So painfully wrong. Flaunting your material wealth or achievements does not make you attractive. It makes you a peacock and a pretty boring, tiresome one. A man who attracts women authentically does not need to broadcast his worth. His actions speak louder than his words. Do you honestly believe a woman is going to be turned on because you drive a flashy car or have a fat bank account? If you do, I have news for you. You are chasing the wrong kind of woman. They're out there, but, you know, not the kind of woman you probably want. Instead, be humble. Let your character, your confidence, your charisma do the talking. Be the man who impresses her with his intellect, his wit, and his respect for her. Not the guy who can't shut up about his latest toys or conquests. Chapter 8. Do. Show genuine interest in her. Alright, so on to the next one. You want to know what really turns a woman on? Genuine interest. Not the feigned kind where you nod along while mentally planning what you'll do with her later tonight. That is, if you're worth her time. I'm talking about real, engaging, and a deep interest in who she is as a person. Ask about her passions, her dreams, her thoughts. Don't just go through the motions. Really, actually take a second and listen to what she's saying. Make her feel seen, heard, and valued. Trust me, there is nothing sexier to a woman than a man who makes her feel like she's the only person in the room. These aren't just tips. They are rules. Breaking them does not mean that you strike out. It means that you're out of the game. So either you play by them, or you can keep pretending. Imagining you're a god's gift to women. Chapter 1. The Magnetic Gaze Alright, listen up, fellas. We're about to delve into something that can seriously up your game. The Magnetic Gaze. Now, I'm not talking about those fleeting glances or awkward staring contests. No, this is a whole different ball game. And if you master it, you're going to have her wrapped around your finger faster than you can say attraction. 
Let's get one thing straight. Eye contact isn't just some accidental thing you do while talking. It is a deliberate, powerful tool that can create a connection like no other. You see, when you lock eyes with someone, you're sending a signal that you're fully present in the moment. And guess what? That is magnetic. It is a gravitational pull that draws her attention to you. And believe me, she will not be able to look away. Now let's talk technique. You ever heard of the triangular gaze? I personally love it because I've done it before, time and time again, and it always ends up uh, in good times. First, you look her in one eye, and then the other, and then finally down to her lips and back up. It's a subtle but intense thing that amps up the chemistry between you two. This technique shows that you're not just passively listening, but you are engaging on a whole different level. You assume control, and women dig that. But why does that matter, you ask? Well, let me paint you a picture. Imagine you're having a conversation with her. Your eyes are locked onto hers. You're not checking your phone or scanning the room. You're there, fully immersed, and it's a very heady experience. That kind of focus sends a clear message that you value her company, that you're confident, and that you're not afraid to let her a little uh, in a little bit closer, to be a little vulnerable. And I don't think this is some sort of mystical trickery. This is science. Studies have shown that prolonged eye contact can trigger the release of oxytocin, a hormone associated with bonding and trust. It's literally creating a connection at a chemical level. Chapter 2. The Intrigue of Subtle Teasing Playful teasing is like a shot of adrenaline to a conversation. It injects energy, keeps things dynamic, creates a unique kind of connection. You're not just another guy having a boring chat. You're stirring up emotions, making her laugh, leaving her wanting more. Now, here's where that push-pull technique comes in. It's like a psychological dance. You're pushing her away a little bit just to pull her back in. It's all about creating that back-and-forth dynamic that keeps her on her toes. When you tease her lightly, you're showing that you're not putting her on a pedestal all the time. You're not afraid to call her out on her quirks or gently challenge her opinions. And guess what? That is so intriguing. And it'll do things to her. Assuming she's somewhat attracted to you, of course. Say you're having a conversation, and she mentions that she's a fan of a certain TV show. Instead of nodding along like a bobblehead, you playfully raise an eyebrow and say, Oh, so you're one of those people. It's not a dig, it's a tease. It's like you're nudging her. It's a way of showing her that you're engaged. You're not afraid to stir things up a bit. You've got a sense of humor to boot. But here's the kicker. Timing and tone matter so much. You're not there to deflate her confidence or make her uncomfortable. You're there to create a lighthearted, fun atmosphere. You're adding a dash of playfulness to the conversation, and that is where the magic happens. And, and don't worry about coming up with some elaborate one-liners. You don't gotta be a stand-up comedian. It's just about paying attention, finding those little opportunities to inject a playful jab, watching her response, and going from there. If she's laughing, if she's bantering back, you're doing it right. If she starts eyeing you, playing with her hair, and maybe blushing a little bit, <laughs> you are definitely doing something right. Chapter 3, The Seductive Slow Smile Alright, let's uh, talk about a weapon that's more powerful than you might think. The Seductive Slow Smile. Now this isn't your run of the mill grin, it's a calculated move that can send shivers down her spine and leave her yearning for more. Now listen, because when you lock eyes with her and let that smile crawl up your lips at a pace that can only be described as torturous, you're creating a magnetic pull that is so hard to resist. It's not about flashing a smile like a toothpaste commercial, it's about the rhythm the timing, the message that it conveys. But here's how it works. The slow seductive smile is not an immediate response to a joke or a casual comment. No, it is a deliberate choice that comes at just the right moment. For example, you're having a conversation. There's a lull in the exchange. She's looking at you, waiting for your next move. That is when it happens. You let the corners of your mouth curl up, oh, so slowly. It's, like, it's a tease, you know, a hint of something more. This isn't a wide grin, it's a half-smile, a knowing smirk that says, I've got something up my sleeve. It's like you're sharing a secret with her through that smile. You're not giving away all your cards, you're leaving her intrigued and curious. And that's the beauty of it. It creates a sense of mystery and anticipation, it creates a sense of tension. Imagine the scenario, you're discussing a topic and she makes a playful jab. Instead of immediately firing back, you lock eyes with her, you hold that pause. And when you let that slow smile creep onto your face, you've won. It's like you're saying, <laughs> you got me there, without actually saying it. It's a way of showing you're confident, composed, and that you're not easily rattled.
Chapter 4, The Mysterious Flirtation Alright, check this out. Enigmatic flirtation is not about laying all your cards on the table. It means dropping hints, leaving breadcrumbs, and inviting her to follow the trail. In one case, it could be that you're having a conversation and she mentions a hobby or an interest. Instead of immediately diving into a full-blown conversation about it, you give a playful smile. You say something like, ah, that sounds interesting. Tell me more. It's a tease, a way of saying, gotta work for it. Enigmatic flirtation is about balancing distractness with restraint. It's saying just enough to pique her interest without giving everything away. It's like you're speaking in codes, and she's the only one who has the decoder. And that's where the allure lies. It's like a secret language shared only between the two of you. Here's a golden rule. Never underestimate the power of leaving her with a question mark in her mind. Instead of providing all the answers, keep her guessing. When you do that right, you're creating a dynamic where she's eager to engage, to eager to explore the depths of your thoughts. And let's be clear, this ain't about playing games or being evasive. It means creating a connection that's rooted in curiosity, shared discovery, making her feel like there is more to you than meets the eye. And that exploring that more is an adventure that she's excited to embark on. Chapter 5. The Unapologetic Confidence Oh, time to talk about a real game changer that'll set you apart from the crowd. Unapologetic confidence. I'm not talking about a cocky, over-the-top display. I mean a quiet, unshakable belief in yourself that is undeniable. Let's be brutally honest here. Confidence isn't just a nice-to-have trait. It is a necessity if you want to turn heads and make hearts skip a beat. But here's the twist. Unapologetic confidence takes it to a whole new level. It's not just about being tall, walking tall, speaking with conviction. It's also about living your life on your terms without seeking approval from anybody else. To put that into perspective, say you enter a room. Heads turn. Not because you're the loudest or the flashiest, but because your presence exudes a self-assuredness that is hard to ignore. You're not afraid to express your opinions, stand up for your beliefs, or to take charge when needed. You don't shrink in the face of challenges, you rise up and you meet them head on. Unapologetic confidence doesn't mean arrogance, it means embracing your strengths and embracing your flaws. Knowing that you are worthy of respect and admiration regardless of what anyone else thinks. It's the kind of confidence that doesn't crumble in the face of rejection or criticism, and you can successfully show a woman that. And you can, then, believe me, you can, and she will crumble for you. In the game of attraction, the rules, they're just not set in stone. There is no rule book, and that whatever playbook that you could loosely call the playbook is constantly evolving. What works for one person might not work for another. Chapter 2. You have great body language. You walk into a room full of people. What do they see first? Your clothes? Your haircut? No, gentlemen, what they see first is your body language. The way that you carry yourself, the way that you walk, the way that you hold yourself. That's the first impression that you make. And believe me, that's a lasting one. Having great body language isn't just standing tall or not slouching. It is radiating that confidence, that control, that assurance, that pep in your step. It's basically making a statement without making a word come out of your mouth. <laughs> it's about commanding respect without demanding it. Let's use our imagination again. Two men entering a room. One man walks in with his shoulders slumped, his eyes downcast. He takes up as little space as he can, he withdraws into himself. The other walks with his shoulders squared, chin up, eyes forward, owning his space. Which one do you respect more? Which one seems more confident, more in control, more appealing? Let's talk about posture. Having a good posture is not just about physical health, that's mental too. When you stand tall with your shoulders back and your chest out, you're telling the world and you're telling yourself that you're confident. You're strong. This in turn boosts your self-esteem and your confidence. It's kind of like a cycle. Confidence breeds good posture and good posture breeds good confidence. Chapter 3. Subtle Confidence You gotta remember this. Confidence is such a game changer. It's that secret ingredient that makes you stand out. Women love a confident man. Not the loud, show-off kind, but a man who knows his worth and carries himself with a quiet, steady confidence. Now do not mistake confidence with arrogance, please. There is a thin line between the two and you don't want to cross that because you'll go from a person I like talking to to somebody that I never talk to ever again. Arrogance is killer. Confidence is knowing that you can do something. Arrogance is saying that you're better. Women dig the former, not the latter. You see, when you're confident, you don't need to yell or act tough to show that you're strong. 
Your actions, your words, your attitude, they all do the talking for you, bud. And let me tell you, the talk is so much more attractive than any muscle flex or tall tail. Here's a little secret. The way that you talk can reveal so much about your confidence. Imagine saying something nice to a woman, but not looking her in the eyes when you say it. Doesn't really show confidence, does it? Now try the same thing, but this time, look her in the eyes, lower your voice a bit. See the difference? Chapter 4. You're chivalrous. Some call it outdated, others swear by it, but here's the truth. Chivalry, in its true essence, is a demonstration of respect. And let me tell you, women love respect. Matter of fact, human beings love respect. In fact, they, they all crave it. Now don't twist this into some fancy idea of rescuing damsels in distress. It's not what we're talking about. Chivalry is all about showing care, consideration, and yes, respect. It's not considering women weak. It's treating them with egalitarianism and kindness. Let me break it down for you. Walking on the outer side of the sidewalk when you're with a woman? Chivalrous. Offering her her jacket when she's cold? Chivalrous. Walking her home with her comfort in mind, of course? That's chivalrous too. Being nice to kids or pets when she's around? You're definitely chivalrous. But why does any of that matter? Because when you display this kind of stuff, you're creating an atmosphere of trust. Women feel safe around you. They know that they can rely on you. And believe me, there is nothing more attractive than a man who can provide a sense of security. Not just financial or anything, but emotional security as well. You're showing her that you're not just a man who can take care of himself, but also those around him. Chapter 5. You can flirt well. Now a lot of you hotshots out there probably think you got it down. But there's a fine line between successful flirting and landing yourself in the friend zone. Or even worse, the creep zone. First, let's address the basics. Eye contact, smiling, these are the cornerstones of flirting. They're universal, they're super simple, and they're effective. But let's not stop with the basics, let's, 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 let's get advanced up in here. What works on one woman will probably not work on every woman, and it certainly might not work on the next. But there is one universal trait that every woman appreciates. Some in, in varying degrees, obviously some are more goofy than others, but that's humor. Humor, gentlemen, is your secret weapon. It is the one thing that can make you stand out in the sea of men trying to win her over. Even, even with serious women, they will crack a joke every once in a while, I promise. But, you know, humor is subjective. What's funny to you might not be so funny to her. So pay attention to her body language, her verbal response. If she's laughing, if she's engaging, then you're on the right track. If she's not, well then it's time to switch tactics. Now let's talk about pickup lines. They're overused, they suck, they're cliche. And let's be real, they don't work. They just don't. I don't know if you've ever tried a pickup line. It gets laughed at. Instead of relying on some overused line, focus on being genuine. Start with a smile, engage in conversation, and keep it light and fun. But don't forget to monitor the conversation. If it's getting stale or creeping into the creep zone, time to change course. Being aware of how the conversation's going is so crucial for the game of flirting, so have social skills. Yeah. Or even not like necessarily massive social skills, just have social awareness. Yeah, there you go. Chapter 6. You maintain yourself. Boys, let us address a simple truth. No woman wants a man who can't take care of himself. Simple as that. Simple as that. A man who takes the time to maintain himself speaks loud about his character, says that he respects himself, values his appearance, and he understands the importance of personal hygiene. If you can't keep yourself clean and presentable, how can she trust you to take care of anything else? Your appearance isn't just about looking good, it's about smelling good, too. Do you know that bad hygiene can really, really repel women? Yeah, of course. I mean, right, and obviously, smelling bad could be the reason why you're striking out, dude. Don't be the guy who dresses to impress but forgets to shower. Your nice clothes and expensive cologne are wasted if you stink. Shower regularly, use deodorant, and maintain good oral hygiene. Oh, and uh, when it comes to the way that you dress, keep it simple. Don't go wild with various colors like you're some tropical parrot. You're not here to draw everybody's attention in a desperate manner. You're here to feel good about yourself and show it confidently. These tricks aren't really tricks. They're just rules of the social game. And it's not about changing who you are, but enhancing and showcasing the attractive traits that you already have. Be the best version of you and watch as you naturally attract the right kind of attention. So, get out there, champ. See you in the streets.